Hello everyone. Welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, I'm going to introduce you Agent H2 by Simular AI, a new open source and modular agentic framework that will help you build computer operated agent or computer huge agents. You know, in the last few months, we have seen a lot of development in the agents ecosystem. Right, the entire agentic AI ecosystem, OpenAI released computer operated agents and a lot of other open source frameworks came up uh, lately that helps you build computer huge agents. But similar AI's agent is to a step further, you know, in the same race and it's really advanced. I'm gonna show you, they have different features that you can use and it's really easy to use and also open source at the same time. So let's jump in and see how we can use Agent S2 by Simular AI. Now, if you look at here on my screen, they say Agent S2, an open modular and scalable framework for computer huge agents. Now, it's released last month, as you can see, this says 12th March, 2025. Of course, I'm gonna walk you through the GitHub repository and these are really underrated agent framework guys. They don't get all the hype, of course, due to the big players that we see, but these are open source tools that you can use to build, you know, uh, build computer huge agents or computer operated agent, COA, you know, the acronym that we, we all know, right? If you're working with the agentic AI frameworks. Now you can find out the state of the art performance. So let me make this a bit bigger so you can see it. It says, you can see similar agent H2. Look at the success rate, you know, 34.5 out of 50 max steps allowed on different tasks. Of course, you can see the OS world benchmark. Now, OpenAI CUA, CUA, operator comes second, you know, with 32.6, you know, and you can find out ByteDance, you know, again, China, UITAR, similar agent S, uh, the first, uh, first version of the uh, similar agent family. Now we are talking about the H2 and Claude 3.7 and so on and so forth. Now, you can find out all the results. How does it work, right? The agentic brain that they have, you know, it, it has vision, it has control, planning, reasoning, language and memory because long context memory is a need for agentic AI system and precise movement, right? Now scroll down, you can find out how it works. So you can see there, this is the engine, right? Now they have manager, worker, grounding and memory all the uh, crucial components that you need to build a computer operated agent uh, or anything on top of it, right? Now, if you look at here, it has worker, manager and memory where, you know, the knowledge and the context resides, the experience grounding where everything remains within the same boundary and so on and so forth. Now you can do a lot of things. I'm gonna show you a quick example of it as well. But yeah, this is the blog post that you can go through it. Now here on the GitHub repository, as I said, it's open source. You can see he says Agent H2, an open modular and scalable framework, all their updates and how you can set it up. Very easy to set up. I'm gonna walk you through uh, when I'm going to show you this. Now let's come here uh, and let me just minimize this. Let me just cut this and I'm gonna give you a walkthrough how you can run it. The first thing that you have to do, you have to come and git clone you can see I already have git clone agent s git if you see here on my screen. So you have to do that. The moment you do it, you will get a folder like this. You can see agent s. Now this is the folder. Now when you have the folder, you can create a virtual environment using UV or if you are using pip also not using UV, you can just do python hyphen mv and dot vnv source activate bin activate whatever depending on what operating system you are using. Now I am using UV. So I'm gonna do UV in it. And when you do dot, because I don't want to create a new folder, I just want to initialize the project within the same cloned folder. So just, just gonna do a dot. Now UV in it, the moment you do it, it's gonna create a pyproject.2ml, it's gonna create a Python project, you know, that's uh, through UV. Okay, now UV is a new, uh, I'll say a package manager, dependencies manager, and beyond that, right? That's basically faster than pip and pipx or whatever. Now, once you do that, you're gonna do UV uh, VNV to create a virtual environment. You can see I already have the virtual environment over here. Now, once you do the virtual environment, you're gonna, of course, activate that. So I, you're gonna activate with uh, CD, VENV, scripts, and you can do ampersand, ampersand, and activate depending on what operating system you are using. If you are using Linux, you have to do bin, uh, uh, source bin, not scripts. 
uh, CD bin and then uh, source activate, not like you are doing scripts. Now, once you have the VENB settled and installed, you need to do all the dependencies that you need to install. Now, you should install GUI agents, okay? Because if you read it here, it's, uh, let me just go a bit down. You can see agent is to operate solely on raw screenshots as input eliminating the need for structured accessibility data. So it basically takes your raw screenshot as an input. As you can see it, of course, convert to byte, six, uh, uh, convert to base 64, excuse me, I was saying byte 64, convert to base 64 and do it like that, right? Pass it to models and that basically does all the job for you. I'm gonna show you a live demo of it. So make sure you have uh, UV, uh, GUI agents, you have python.env to deal with VNVs. And of course, you can install other things like UVCon. It gets installed with that uh, ultimately. Now, once that is done, if you come here, you can see I already have done it. You, of course, you can set it up you know, in, in some keys. Otherwise, you can just set it up in uh, ENVs as well. The most important thing that I liked about uh, Agent H2, about their retrieval from web using this tool called Perplexica. Okay, so now to use Perplexica, you have to do a git sub module. It comes up uh, within the agent H2 folder. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna do a git sub module update in it. And the moment you do it, you will find out a tons of files and folders within this Perplexi Perplexica subfolder, right? The most important of those is config.2ml. You will find out config.2ml.example. You have to first copy that to config.2ml or just rename it and keep your keys over there. You know, if you are using Grok, you can use Grok. If you are using Olama model, self-hosted, you can also do it. You can also do it through OpenAI and so on and so forth. Now, you can see a Docker Compose file. Let me show you that. Now, if you look at this Docker Compose file, these are the services that Perplexica required to run a perplexity-like tool, even better than that, you now where you can do a wave wave information discovery, right? You can discover information, retrieve information from open internet, and I'm gonna show you that. Now, if you scroll down, you can find out the front end, which is running on React, or uh, Next.js, by the way, so it runs on this port, uh, you know, and you have volumes, you can persist if you want, you know, you can connect your database, so on and so forth. So make sure you do Docker Compose. So what I'm gonna do is, you can see I'm already running, I'm running Docker Compose up, and you can see it runs my containers. I'm gonna so you can see I'm just doing Docker Compose up. When you're running it for the first time, it's gonna take some time. So make sure that you wait for it, and then you go to localhost 3000. You will see something like this. It says research begins here. Now, in the left hand side, they have a new chat. They have home, of course, the chat, and then you can search some, uh, you know, information and then library. Now here. They have options like speed and balanced. Now let's say create a sort report on TV Studio uh, images by Chat GPT or something. Let's first see this. I've asked a I've asked a question here. Let's say create a sort report on Gilby Studio images by Chat GPT, and it's gonna you can see it's gonna look at everything on the internet. And I just said right, really fast. It's faster than perplexity if you look at that way. And I'm not I'm not even using the best model out there. I'm going to show you that. It brings you all the references. You can see gigs for gigs, B in crypto, AI to SQL, and it gives you an answer. You have your uh, search images, search videos, kind of a thing over here. You can see it over here. Search images and search videos, and it it answers you. It says. Chat GPT powered by OpenAI's GPT-40 model offers users the ability to create blah, blah, blah. It gives you some related questions, right? How easy it is. It also has a co-pilot feature. Same way Perplexity provides you, but this is open source. That is not open source, guys. Here you have an open source tool, a framework that helps you run within your own infrastructure, within your own network, and you can do the same with open source model as well. When you click on this settings icon, now in the settings icon, you can see I'm using GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is a depreciated model, if you look at it in that way. If you change the model to like, let's say, GPT 4.0, GPT 4.0 Mini, you can also use that, but I'm not doing it. You can see the embedding model. You have the small and large model. You have all the models access that you can do it. You can see fantastic, right? Now you have the theme. Let's say I'm gonna do a lighter theme. It becomes lighter, right? So I really like Perplexica by 
agent S2, which helps me, which gives me my own perplexity and that I can run it in my own system and use with open source models as well. Now that's one thing that that's about Perplexica. Very simple, you can just do Docker Compose up hyphen D if you want to do it in the detached mode. If you just want, if you want to debug some bugs, you might get some bugs with the volumes and persistent volumes. Then you just do Docker Compose up and debug it. Okay, if you get anything. Hopefully you will not get it because it's pretty straightforward. You just do git submodule uh, in it and then these files will get updated here within the Perplexica folder. And then you just do Docker compose of. Make sure you have set up your API keys in config.2ml. Let me show you 2ml.example. This is what you have to do. Now, if you are using OpenAI models, you will be putting your OpenAI keys over here. If you are using Olama, then make sure that your Olama is running and it runs on port 11434 as we all know and for the vector for the vector database for finding out similar chunks we are using cosine similarity as default you can use jacquard levinstein so on and so forth and the good thing as i said it's open source you can also contribute now this is about the perplexica but it's not about only perplexica right you can do your computer a task as well so for example if i open uh, let's say i open Excuse me, other. Uh, let me make this a bit bigger. Okay, I'm gonna open, I'm already inside this. Now you can also run your uh, backend APIs, you know, running on fast API using, make sure you have UVCon installed. And it gives you, of course, it's not ready yet. You, you can create these APIs, expose this API and build computer operated agent that can take screenshot, perform some tasks like, you know, closing notepad, uh, putting images into a file or, or, you know, doing emails for you and so on and so forth. So you can also do that. Let me just uh, come here and let me try to run this. This will take a bit of time uh, to do. You can see it's still not running. It takes a bit of time to get started. So we'll wait for you can now see application is of complete. Now, if you come here. Now you see a swagger UI where you have run status execute and stop agent. Now in the execute command stream, if I show you here, you can find out your uh, screenshot accessibility tree and instruction. You can give instruction what instruction you want to do, like perform, like close my notepad, for example, let's say, and if your notepad is open, it will automatically do it. So it the agent access your computer and perform tasks, of course, through Python codes, right? That's what agent S2 does. Now, uh, if I come here, I'll just get rid of this one. Let me show you an example. I'll just do a start notepad. And it will open a notepad for me. You can see it has opened a notepad. Now, if I show you a uh, file that I created that I am using agent H2, you know, to basically do that. So if you can use close notepad example.py, right, to use it. Now, what it does, you can see I have over here. Now, in this, I'm just going to run this Python close notepad example and it will. It should close the, it should end the notepad. Okay, you can see it has just, oh yeah, you can see it closed the notepad for me, right? So as simple as that, uh, in that part. Now they also have a test.py. If you look at the test.pys, it says Windows config with OpenAI. I have made some changes. If you look at the, their, this file in the GitHub repository, there's something changed. They had Anthropic. I'm using GPT-4.0, you know, for this purpose. And they use Py Auto GUI because that can take screenshots, right? Uh, when you use it uh, locally, Py Auto GUI, it's it's based on Python, a desktop kind of a library to work with. And you can see, take a screenshot for the observation. It say it takes a screenshot. You know, it converts to bytes input output bytes IO. Save that format, get the value of it, and then you can see create observation and a simple test query. Now you can also run this. So I'm gonna run python test.py. Yeah, it takes a bit of time. So if I go here and show you the backend API, so you can create backend APIs and build applications and leverage this API. And you can also use Perplexica as I show you to do, you know, to retrieve information from the web. And you can also like perform computer operated task, right? You can do a lot of tasks locally that you have to do. Uh, you know, you can, as I said, close notepad, copy paste files, you know, write emails. And of course, you have to give access and you have to code it like that. You can you can use, use this to do it. And here it's running a prediction because it's asked the questions, you know, using this take a screenshot for the observation. It, it will, it's going to take a bit of time 
and you can see it says how to close uh, notepad on windows 11 and you can see it, it, it gives you a goal plan to close notepad follow these steps blah 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 and you know it, it it gives you this answer it gives you the code that does it like you can use alt f4 that's what i was using in this close note notepad example dot file you just hit and it closes your notepad that's what i shown you so really amazing guys right you can do a lot of other things with this you have the gui agent go and explore the h2 you can find out all the agents you know you have all the four things grounding manager worker uh, you can find it out over here the code logic and of course you can make some changes as well if you want to make some changes depending on what kind of task you want to do it you can see the kb gets a uh, persist persistent here you know on this you can find out let's say let's look at perplexica rag knowledge because we ask a question as i said it's open source so it has everything over here rag knowledge and everything better to use a database if you really want to make this to production you can connect your own databases like postgres and redis and whatever in that you have narrative memory you have formulate query you, you can find it out here uh, embeddings and everything right this will not work because it's a serialized thing okay now kb and explain that perplexica already so this is what i wanted to introduce you in this video guys i wanted to bring uh agent s2 in your attention that how you can use this open source framework uh, an open agentic framework you can see iclr they already have been you know showing their research and their frameworks and you just computers like a human but use it carefully because it's access your computers right so and of course has surpassed open ai and anthropic computer use uh, and that's why you know i recommend you using maybe we'll bring mcp within agent s2 right uh, that's also be on the roadmap that how model context protocol can become part of agent s2 so let me know what you are building with agent s2 and if you have any thoughts feedbacks or questions in the comment box and i'll give you the link of agent s2 and this blog post of the announcement in the uh, description i'm going to create more project driven videos using agent s2 so stay tuned for that and if you like the content please hit the like icon if you haven't subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe the channel guys that motivates me to create more such videos in your future that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.